Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video I'll be covering the very basics of getting Vuforia set up and running with the Unity game engine. And by the end of the video you'll have a project that you'll be able to package and run on a device to do some very basic image tracking. Just before we get started working with Vuforia, I just wanted to mention that I'm working with the latest version of Unity, which is 2019, and this already has support for Vuforia included by default. I think that the earliest version of Unity that has integrated support for Vuforia was 2017. Anything before that you'll need to download and install the package directly from the Vuforia website. And anything before 2019, you will need to come to the Unity Hub um, and we'll see here that if I install any of the older ones, let's look at 2017, you will need to come here and make sure that you tick the Vuforia Augmented Reality Support or include that if you already have the version installed. Uh, what I would recommend though, obviously if you do have the option, the space available to do this, just get a fresh version of 2019 installed and that will make following along much easier. If you can't do that, if you're running with 2017 or 2018, I'll provide a link in the description below, which will show you a step-by-step -step on how to get things installed for those individual versions, as it is slightly different for 2017 and 2018. With that said though, inside of Unity, I'm just running a blank Unity project, nothing installed yet, and it was just set up to be a default 3D blank project. To get Vuforia installed in the 2019 version, or once you've done the previous steps, as I've mentioned before, what you want to do is come over to Window, Package Manager, and wait for this to load and find the Vuforia package. So this will be at the bottom of the list, and you can see here we have the Vuforia Engine AR, and we just want to install that. With the package installed, we just want to return to our scene. We can remove the default main camera, as we'll be adding that in just a moment. And to create our new camera, we just want to right click in the hierarchy, go to Vuforia Engine, which has just been added by installing the package and create an AR camera. Everything inside of the AR camera should be looking like this and we can leave the options at their default and that will be perfectly fine. And next we want to add an image or an object to track. Uh, usually for this you'd need to create a database using the Vuforia website after signing up with a free account. And if we go over to uh, Window and then Vuforia Configuration, you can see that we have the options to add things like databases, licenses, and all of those things that will be linked up to the Vuforia account a little bit later. For now though, we just want to get something up and running, and Vuforia were kind enough to provide a default database with a selection of images to pull from. To use this, we just want to right click once again in the hierarchy, go down to Vuforia Engine, and then select the image option just here. So like I mentioned, because we haven't already got an image database, what we can do is we can allow it to import the default image database here. We'll see that there's a bunch of folders which are now created and brought in down below. The image target will come with several options here, and the ones that we're interested in are the image target behavior script, which has the predefined type, our Vuforia Mars images, and it defaults to the astronaut, which we can kind of see on this material down here just below. Now from this, uh, this will be the only database that you get by default, but you do get a list of options. Uh, we can change this to a Fisher, Oxygen, Drone, and some other things here. And I'll show you where to find those in the project in a second. I'm going to change this to Drone for now. And this will be the image that we're looking to track when we build this to the device. Before I leave the image target, I'm just going to right click on the transform and reset this from the smaller scale so that we get a uniform one scale here. And that will also make sure that the position and rotation are reset to zero as well. Now to find the images, um, and this is how I'll be tracking this on the device to avoid needing to print things out. We can go down to the editor, go to Vuforia, for print, and we've got the image targeting is what we're working with. And they provide a PDF, which is just a PDF of images. Uh, like I said, we had the astronaut, the drone that I've chosen to track, the fissure, and like I mentioned, the oxygen tank as well. So if we zoom out a bit more there. And these are the things by default you can choose to track. So that's what we'll be using a little bit later for when we built the project. So this is what I mean by picking one of those images. And the final thing that we need for our setup is a prefab that will be spawned when the image is tracked. And this is super easy to add without any scripting needed on our side. So what we want to do is go to game object, create a 3D object, and I'm gonna choose a sphere for this one. I can see here that the position rotation scale are all fine to begin with, so I don't need to reset anything here. We can see though that the object is actually a little bit bigger, and I forgot to mention this, but down here, we can see we have our image that we're tracking. 
So again, this will also update the image here when you change between the different options. We can see that even when I've reset this and set it back up to uh, uniform one on scale, the sphere was a little bit too big. So I'm gonna reset this and then make the uniform scale something like 0.2 on all axes, and that should be a little bit better. Now, another thing to note is that this is exactly where the object will spawn relative to the tracked image when we have this deployed. So at the moment, this would be spawning inside of our tracked image. So we can just drag this up a little bit and this is the sort of thing that I'm looking for. Now, the way that Vuforia will treat this and the way that it's looking for a tracked image and the object to spawn is based on the child-parent relationship in the hierarchy. Uh, and basically, the object that you want to be spawned on the image that you have tracked just needs to be the child of that image target. So we can grab the sphere, place this on the image target, and that will now work when we build this. So by default, this is automatically going to hide the image when we load the game or the application. And as soon as we find the image, it will make the sphere reappear. Now, just for tidiness, and if we need to make any adjustments or updates to our sphere object a little bit later, and obviously I've come for this as a kind of really simplistic version of the drone. So that wasn't accidental. That's why I've chosen the drone image and a spherical object. Uh, but I'll just come down here and create a new folder. Call this one prefabs. And we'll just drag our sphere or simple drone into the prefabs folder. And that just means that if we want to change the color, add a script to this a little bit later to make it animate in or something, then we have that prefab ready to go, obviously without making any changes here in the editor windows. And that's it. We can now test our setup and start tracking our image. v it does offer support for webcams if you wanted to test this in your editor. I don't have a webcam available, so I'm just going to build this to my device and I'll demonstrate the results for you there. Okay, so with my PDF file open, you can see that I've located the drone image that I had selected to track in the editor setup, uh, and it pretty much immediately spawns the simple drone representation object. Uh, one thing I have noticed with Vuforia and AR Foundation compared is that the tracking feels much more immediate and snappy with Vuforia, as well as having a slightly more reliable and stable kind of update to it when you're moving the object or the image around. Uh, it just feels a little bit less twitchy. And that's why I kind of made a point at the beginning there that I was making sure I wasn't looking at the image for a little while and I slowly kind of scrolled it up because it's quite hard to tell sometimes when it's been tracked because if you're already pointing the device at the image, it kind of feels as though the object was always there because it's so immediate. You can't really tell the point at which the image was tracked if it's already in view. So it should definitely be quite fun looking at how we can expand upon the default Unity setup using the Vuforia developer portal, adding in our own trackable databases and things like that. Uh, and I should also mention as well at this point that I'm not sponsored by Vuforia. Although if anyone is watching from Vuforia and you would like to get in touch, then do feel free. Uh, but I've always just really liked the platform. I think it's really cool the kind of things that you can make using it. And we'll be going into things like creating custom 3D objects that we can manually scan in and then track those in the real world as well. So that's going to be pretty cool. So that's it for this though. You can play around with the system a little. You can try tracking different images and adding different objects to be tracked on those images. As always though, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around and all that good stuff. Consider subscribing and clicking to receive all notifications to ensure that you get all of the updates on any of the future content on the channel. And a really big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for sticking with me as I go through kind of transitioning into different topics. And if you wanted to help me continue creating weekly free content on a wide range of topics from game design to things like this with AR, then do consider checking out the Patreon link in the description down below. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.